Hello there, and welcome to this Fast Track video. In this Fast Track video, we're going to be teaching you about audio equipment. Each video is going to be very different, and it's going to dive deep into specific audio equipment. In these training videos, we're going to show you who uses this particular audio equipment, why it's used, how it's used, how to use it, as well as specific technical jargon that might confuse you or that you might not know about. So without further ado, let's jump into this training video and learn more about audio equipment. Let us begin by looking at what is a keyboard. A keyboard is a musical instrument that a user can play sounds generated by samples or microchips. These sounds are played via keys that resemble those found on a piano, where the white keys represent natural tones and the black keys represent sharps and flats. Keyboards usually come in different shapes and sizes. However, the most common key range in keyboards come in 37, 49, 61, 76 and 88 keys. Keyboards with 37, 49 and 61 keys come with synth action feel to the keys, while 76 and 88 key keyboards generally have a piano hammer action keys. Although this video is about exploring keyboards, we will explore keyboards, synthesizers, digital pianos and more, as they generally fall under the same category of musical instruments. In this video, we'll cover the differences in keyboards, who would use keyboards, how to pick a keyboard based on different applications and more. Let us begin. To understand keyboards better, let's first categorize keyboards into different categories and go over the differences. Let's start with keyboards. Keyboards are common electronic music instruments that are used as all-in-one instruments. They have built-in speakers and musicians are able to play hundreds of different sounds that are built into them. These sounds are mainly samples of other instruments such as piano, guitar, flute, drums and more. Although all keyboards require electricity to power them, most come with the ability to be powered by batteries. An added feature that most keyboards have is the ability to play backing tracks to learn how to play keyboard, as well as lessons for the users to play along with. It is with many of these reasons why many people pick keyboard to learn as their first musical instrument. Next, we have a range of keyboards. Much like the keyboard, with built-in sounds and speakers, arrangers are more geared towards live performance. This is due to the fact that arrangers allow users to sequence their audio for performances, thus making performing as a one-man band a lot easier than it would be with a keyboard. The sound quality in terms of the sampled sounds in an arranger tend to be a lot more superior than that of a standard keyboard. Next up, we have digital pianos. These are pianos that are powered by electricity that allow users to play samples to recreate an acoustic piano. These sounds can also be synthesized, which enables manufacturers to recreate piano sounds in their digital pianos. Because of a digital piano not needing to use acoustic mechanics, the big drawing card to a digital piano above acoustic piano is the fact that they are a lot more smaller and do not require additional and continuous tuning and maintenance. Additionally, with the size being so much smaller than an acoustic piano, the price becomes more affordable for purchasing. Although they are a style of piano, they not only have piano sounds, they mainly come with sounds such as organs, electric piano, strings, and choir sounds. Some digital pianos also have basic teaching functions such as a metronome and the ability to play with a backing track. However, the primary purpose will be to use one as you would an acoustic piano. Since most piano players like to perform live in front of a crowd, and in many instances, it's almost impossible to set up a piano, in this case, stage pianos play their part. Stage pianos are similar to digital pianos, however, they are more portable than digital pianos. They also have more options with regards to the built-in sounds and functions for performance purposes. Users are also able to adjust the characteristics of the sound, including the equalizer, effects, and overall tone of the sounds. Up next, we have synthesizers. Synthesizers are unique keyboards that use microchips to recreate sounds. These microchips make use of electricity to generate sounds in waveforms, such as sawtooth, sine, square, noise, and triangle. These sounds go through various processes to create synthetic sounds rather than relying on samples that have been recorded from acoustic instruments. Examples of sound synthesizers can be mainly seen in electronic music such as house or techno music. In movies and video games, the voice of R2-D2 in Star Wars is based on sounds from a synthesizer. And the sounds and soundtrack from Pac-Man 
was completely composed using a synthesizer. Lastly, let's look at a workstation. Workstations can be seen as super keyboards. What stands out from workstations and keyboards is the ability to create whole compositions on a workstation. There are rarely ever any speakers built into a workstation. Most workstations have built-in computers and the size of a workstation is much bigger than that of a keyboard. And lastly, the price tag. Workstations carry price tags that are sometimes 10 times the price of a keyboard. Now that we've gone over the differences between keyboards, let's have a look at who and where keyboards are used. Let's now go over who and where keyboards can be used. Let's first have a look at who. The who would mainly be musicians, music producers, sound designers, bands, film score composers, music composers, and last but not least, music teachers. Where keyboards can be found goes hand in hand with who would use a keyboard, including the following places such as music studios, churches, music venues, movie studios, television studios, video game studios, music schools, and last but not least, inside of homes. Remember, these are not limitations as to where keyboards can be used, but merely most common places where they can be used. Let's move on to the next section of this video. Many manufacturers that make keyboards, mainly with regards to synthesizers and workstations, also opt to make sound modules. Sound modules are devices that come in the form of a tabletop or rack mount device that has the sounds and sound processes from a keyboard variant, however, without the keys. Manufacturers such as Roland, Korg and Yamaha make these devices to give users the opportunity to use their devices without the need of having a keyboard. The biggest benefit of this would be the space factor. In the instance of a live performer or a studio, this is very beneficial as the user can have multiple sound modules that they can use to create and perform music. The only setback in this practice would be that many manufacturers invest a lot of research, development and money into perfecting their keyboard's keybed. Without the keyboard function on the sound module, many users may miss out on the whole experience of the instrument. To overcome this, some users will purchase a premium keyboard or synthesizer to use as a MIDI controller with their sound module. To send musical notes and information, the user will need to make use of MIDI. This can be through an external MIDI sequencer or a MIDI controller. In some instances, to control parameters such as ADSR in a synthesizer, an additional controller or MIDI controller will be needed to set up and overcome the slight inconvenience. Both keyboards and sound modules are great for both music production and live performance. The biggest factor between picking between the two would be the user's needs and wants. Let's now have a look at the confusing jargon surrounded with keyboards. Let us now have a look at confusing jargon. Let's begin with sample. A sample is an audio recording. In the instance of a keyboard, workstation or arranger, this is less than a second and is an audio recording of an instrument that is used to be played by a keyboard, workstation or arranger. These can vary from guitars, piano, drums, and these are single hit samples that are mapped across the keys of a keyboard. Oscillator. An oscillator is a circuit which produces waveforms that are continuous, repeated, and alternating without the need of an input. The waveform will be in the form of a sine, square, or sawtooth, as well as triangle. These in the end will determine that the sound the synthesizer can produce. Synth action keys. These are a type of keys found in keyboards that determine how the keys feel. These keys are mainly plastic and rather than being controlled by weight, they use springs to give them a very light feel. Hammer action or weighted keys are keys found mainly in digital or stage piano. These resemble the feeling of a real piano. However, rather than the tension from the strings of a piano, weights and mechanics are used to resemble the feel of a real piano. Keybed. This is the rail that produces pressure against the keys to keep the feeling of a keyboard consistent amongst all keys. Most keyboards from a brand have the same keybed. This is what keeps keyboard players loyal to specific brands as once they play one keyboard, they are comfortable and they prefer the feeling of the brand's keyboards. 
Aside from the sounds being generated by a keyboard, the keybed is where a lot of research, development and investment goes into a keyboard. ADSR, short for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release, are parameters of the envelope which determines how sounds in a synthesizer will react when being played. The attack is the time when a sound will start when the trigger or key has been pushed down. If it's at 0, it will start immediately. If it's at 5, it will start a little later. The sustain is how long the sound will play for at a constant volume while the trigger or key is pushed down. The decay is how long it will take for the volume of the sound to drop to a lesser volume while the trigger or key is being held down. With the release being the time it takes for the sound to become silent once the trigger or key has been released. Sequencer a sequencer is a software or hardware device designed to record and playback data in a sequence, random or specific order of events. These can be used to send MIDI information to a sound module that does not have any form of musical input. CV gates, short for control voltage gate, is a type of connection used to control pitch and gate signal of notes to be either on or off. This was widely used as a method to control synthesizers before MIDI was created. And rather than a 5 pin DIN connector, a CV or gate is a jack connector. That is it for confusing jargon, let us move on to the next section of this video. With all the options available, picking a keyboard can be tricky. Let's have a look at a few scenarios to see what could work best for someone's needs, wants, as well as the application. Starting with someone who's getting started in learning how to play an instrument under the age of 13. A keyboard can be very beneficial as not only will they be learning how to play a piano style instrument, the options of playing other instrument sounds can be advantageous to understanding how other instruments work and what they sound like when being played. With the addition of built-in lessons and portability, this makes keyboards a great tool to learn music as a whole. The prices start from roughly 500 Rand and can go all the way up to 4000 Rand. For anyone wanting to learn or play piano, a digital piano is perfect. The main reason to pick a digital piano over a keyboard would be because of the hammer action keys. This will give someone learning a real feel of what a piano feels like. You wouldn't really practice how to drive a bus with a hatchback car. Although they have similar equipment, they both very different from each other. This also applies to simply playing a piano for enjoyment. Once you've learned to play piano, it's slightly uncomfortable to play for enjoyment on a keyboard as it does not feel the same. The price of a digital piano roughly starts off at 7,000 Rand and can climb all the way up to 60,000 Rand, with the price increasing based on the designs and functions. Next up, anyone in a band or a solo performer, you could look at a keyboard. However, the more ideal option would be an arranger. The added benefit of using an arranger would be the option of using accompaniments for backing tracks and for support. Split keys and combination sounds on an arranger make for great added benefits while performing. Arranger keyboards have starting prices of roughly 6,000 rands and can climb to over 50,000 rand. The difference being the features allowing for better arrangements and convenient performance functions. Last but not least, to have a keyboard where you can compose and sequence music, one could look at a workstation. This would allow a music composer or music producer to produce whole music productions within a keyboard. This would eliminate the need for a recorder or a DAW. There is also the option of using high quality sounds that are in a workstation in conjunction with the DAW to make music, which increases the versatility of a workstation. Music workstations usually start off at 15,000 Rand and can go into the hundreds of thousands of Rands, depending on the features and functions. Now that we've covered some scenarios, we have a better understanding of how to pick a keyboard. Let us now move on to the next section of this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoyed it. If there was anything you didn't understand, feel free to drop me an email at the email address at the end of this video. Thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Take care and bye-bye.